Good afternoon, HPC fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We're midway through day two of the three days of coverage we've got here for you on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson with my left-hand man, Dave Vellante. Hey, I'm lefty, you know. I know you are lefty. Yeah. I was born lefty, actually, fun fact, and they tied my hand behind my back and turned me into a righty. So I do everything with my left hand except for right. So are you quasi ambidextrous? That's quasi, cool. yeah, yeah. Cool or just clumsy, depending yeah, on the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> wacky. I think, I think we know that. Our next guest, however, is definitely not wacky. She was so great <laughs> earlier this morning. We had to have Gita back on. Gita, thanks again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. I'm having so much fun with you guys. Um, thank you for having me. Well, exactly. It seems like it seems like we've, we're, we're now fangirling on you. So it's it's great to it's great to have you back on. I'm really excited. We can dive a little deeper into the storage story and into data management. Yep. I want to start really high level, just in case folks are just tapping in this to this conversation. AI creates a really interesting data management problem. Can you break that down for us. Yeah, I think it's um, it's sometimes the unseen problem because I think there's all there's been all of this um, just massive focus on the compute. Can I get the GPUs? Can I get the compute? And there's been a lot of focus on that, and that's that's all goodness. Um, you know, that sort of was a requirement. We needed to make sure we got through that. But there's this sort of afterthought which comes in, which is like, okay, now that I've got all this compute power, what do I feed it? Um, and what am I going to use? If I'm actually going to use it in practice. And I think that's where we're seeing a lot of the data conversations pop up. So this event has been amazing. My first time at Supercompute, but I have learned so much. It's, wow. yeah, normally on my flight back, I can kind of like download all my thoughts. This one, I need a couple of flights just to kind of like download my thoughts on what I've learned <laughs> because the conversations are so broad and so deep and they vary so much. Everybody's got a slightly different position that they're coming from, whether it's academia or enterprise or folks that have been doing HPC for a long time, or newbies. The government's here too. 100%, right? So yeah. There's just, there's all these different nuances, and I think just having been in data and data management for a long time, all sorts of questions go off in my mind, which sound, okay, like what are your priorities and what are your hard data requirements? There's compliance and governance and all these things that many organizations, the government, have to comply to. And I think when just now I sort of scratch the surface on what does that mean, and how do you quickly get yourself ready so that you've got the data but if you'll feed these GPUs that are either on their way to you or have been delivered. So I think it's a really, um, really interesting time where people are asking hard questions about storage and data management. I think we're going back and we're reevaluating. Is it a new thing? Is it an evolution? Am I going to do this for a while and then go back? Um, should my investment be all in? Should I run it as a POC? Shall I do it in the cloud? Shall I do it? I mean, there's all of those questions and then big questions when it comes to data because it means you're moving it around doing all sorts of things. So, fantastic time. I don't know that any of us have the answer, um, but I can say I feel like, you know, being within Dell, we have access to so many people to talk to like yourselves and we're all learning and it's, it's good. We'll collectively figure this out. I think about the classic data management problems. You got to ingest it into a data lake or a database. Yeah. And then you, you've got to analyze it, you've got to clean it, you've got to engineer it, you've got to data science it, you've got to bring in metadata, you've got to yeah. govern it. I mean, it's all these kind of it's a lot of hand linear layers yeah. and, and yeah. it's a real difficult process. And then once you once it comes something comes out of it, you gotta do it all over again because it's yeah. out of date. Exactly. So how is AI sort of changing that, what are the problems that you're talking to customers about today and how is it different? I think the problems, as you said it, Dave, it's marrying all of that together. There's a lot of technology out there that does a piece of it really well. But if you kind of start to think about how do I do this in a repeatable fashion that I can stand behind, audit, authenticate, all those things, it suddenly becomes a mix of tools that have to somehow work seamlessly really well together. Your, your metadata comes from one engine, you've got structured, unstructured, semi-structured data, they all have different sorts of paradigm shifts. So I think it's the biggest thing that I'm seeing is how do we use a selection of tool sets and bring them together such that we're providing a full workflow, kind of solves all of those problems. Let me store it, let me ingest it, let me understand it, let me you know make some use out of it, but also do it in a way that the, the sum total gives a repeatable model that many of these companies can stand behind because otherwise we get into hallucinations and challenges around, is this real, is my data trustworthy, is it clean, everything that you're saying. So well, is your, sorry, yeah, I may, is your yeah. approach then to sort of have an opinionated, curated capability solution for yeah. your customers? Yeah, I mean, we've had the Dell AI factory. Um, we've launched over the last year um, additions to our portfolio within Dell. We've been doing storage a long time. We've right. evolved those capabilities, but also the Dell Data Lake House, which is the ability to do 
what you highlighted, how do I pull out the metadata, get federated engines, run some compute against it to get that analytics out of it. So it really is a series of options within the portfolio. So our customers can choose based on where they are in their journey. They don't have to lift and shift and throw away what they've got, but really just use a framework with the AI factory and then use the pieces they need as they need them. And what Dell does is we validate those solutions. We've got a point of view on where the strengths are, what to consider. And for those that are early in the journey, there's professional service opportunities just to kind of, what questions should I even ask? Where should I start to even know where I should plug myself into this environment? So that's I, where we are. I think you just brought up a really good point. Dave and I were at Dell Tech World when they launched the AI factory right. earlier this year. Really cool to see the evolution yeah. there. I mean, the factory is actually here on the floor, which is very cool. Lots of different components to that. How do you, I can imagine you're talking to a variety of different customers who are probably and, and I don't mean to project, but I would imagine a little bit overwhelmed because you've got all these different sources of data, all these different opportunities and all these different toolkits. How do you start them down that decision tree so that they can have a yeah. shorter time to value and see that ROI quickly? Yeah, it, it very much is that we've sort of developed a service um, offering that really allows us to get with our customers or potentials and ask some quite rudimentary questions sometimes. And there's many light bulb moments like, oh, I hadn't, I hadn't considered that, you know, and, just like the thing we said, like, okay, how do you manage your metadata? What are your requirements? Are you obliged to certain GDPR? Or how do you manage your PI? I mean, just some of those kinds of questions, which gets a lot of folks just thinking about, oh yeah, I've been, I've been doing it this way, but over time as I've evolved, and maybe I did some POCs in the cloud, and I went and did this over here in dev test, I've broken some of my paradigms. How do I build out this engine? So I think the biggest part is starting with those questions, getting a baseline, and then I think the fact that our Dell's approach has been a very open one, plug into open ecosystem. So if you're already doing Parquet, I speak, it's your choice. We're not really trying to mandate saying it's got to be our proprietary environment because someone's starting from somewhere and that somewhere comes with some history and there's been investments made. So I think, I mean, that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing that Dell's got sort of a starting point as you kind of get through some of those early questions we will kind of usher our customers into, okay, here's some of the, the areas where you might want to dig a little bit further. Let us either um, introduce you to a strategic partner because we, we don't have it all and we, Dell's built a lot of strategic partnerships. Um, or we think we have a product that helps you with that. Would you like to POC? And then we're kind of going down the path of, we run labs in our own environment that a customer can log into, run a POC, get a feel for how it might work for them or on their own, you know, kind of run off with, with a POC and see how that works. What do you find is working? Because w what you described, it sounds great, uh, but it's complicated. Yeah, it's yeah. choose your own adventure, but a super yeah, intellectual yeah, adventure. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, with yeah. a great partner, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. And so if, if I think about, okay, I've got data in the cloud, I've got metadata, I've got technical metadata, business metadata, and I've got, um, I've got to figure out now, iceberg, open yeah. iceberg table, yeah. how am I going to govern that stuff? And it's just this mishmash of stuff Okay, great. You're going to have a curated stack. Yep, yep. So how are people applying it? Are they taking sort of small bites, trying to figure out ROI? And, yeah. it, and then what's, what's that roadmap look like? Can it lead to sort of a bigger, you know, more impactful yeah. outcome? Yeah, I'm seeing sort of three segments. There's the really advanced users who have thought this through. They've got a very clear objective and they're coming at it saying, I I've understood what I'm trying to achieve out of this. I know what my end game is and therefore I'm looking for particular questions to be answered, help me with that and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, there's a set of, I'll call it the, the CSPs and the enterprises, quite different markets when we think about AI, generative AI, the CSPs are still very focused on the higher performance, they're kind of building the LLMs, doing more of the training versus the inference. So some of those separations allow us to minimize the number of adventures you might want in your world because now you can kind of categorize, well, I'm really not getting into training, I'm not getting into these thousands of GPU counts help me understand an environment that roughly is of this size and this is how it's going to look for me. And then there's the really, really early conversations, which is I put in an order for my GPUs and haven't yet d defined what success is for my business, right? I want to go try what this might do for me and understand where my roadblocks might be because mm -hmm. I haven't yet looked at my data and I don't know what I've got. I haven't kind of looked under the covers, right? So. I'm sort of seeing a level of maturity that often infers where these customers might drop in to this sort of pick your own adventure. And then also some have very clear, like this is success for me, others are still trying to figure out what the technology can do for them. 
The it's third like, example is fire ready aim. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. right. Well, exactly. Got me some GPUs. Yeah, and now how am I going to utilize them? We don't. We don't know. I'm curious if you're noticing any. You know, delegates to work with so many different co companies yeah. across verticals and industries. Are you seeing any trends that are vertical or industry specific in terms of who's ready to roll versus yeah, who's still yeah. learning? I think there. Um, I mean, there's a couple of verticals that just directly like media and entertainment. Um, you know, they're they're getting quite big into this. We're seeing a lot with. We're not where we met earlier, kind of life sciences, what's oh, happening yeah. in the medical region. Um, so I think there's that space, I've seen some work around the autonomous driving. So, I mean, there's a lot of the verticals are getting into it. My takeaway is that the horizontal of what AI is, is pretty similar with the requirements that each of them are coming up with. Kind of comes down to a capacity, performance, resilience, metadata, insights. The, the sort of requirements um, tend to be a little bit more generic, at least for now. Uh, we may see them refine in the future. So my approach has been, okay, Many of these verticals are going about it for their own outcome, um, but they have very similar challenges. And so the problems to solve are quite similar in nature. Interesting. I mean, we are all in it together yeah. and, and lots of collaboration. I love your candor when you say that we're all still figuring it out. I mean, the AI factory has only been announced for about, what, the last six, seven months? Yeah, something like that. What do you see the evolution there being? Do you think we're going to continue to see? I mean, there's a lot of tools out here right yeah, now. Yeah. And one of the things I think that I'm always very impressed with Dell in terms of this offering is you're decreasing the cognitive load for yeah. our customers yeah. and folks looking for solutions and making that easier. Do you think the market is going to narrow down to a certain set of tools or do you think we're going to continue to see this broad swath? They think. I think we'll pendulum swing for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I always feel like when there's a new technology, everyone's trying to figure it out and we kind of go all in and we swing the other way and say, you know, everything must be. And I think the happy medium is somewhere in between uh, because ultimately all of this has a result and a cost. And it's yeah. like, what is that worth to you? Um, you know, we talked earlier about, is it going to replace humans? I mean, it's in, in my mind, it's, it's helping humans. It's going to make us all more productive, more efficient. And so I think it comes down to a question of what's it worth for you? What's the right optimizations you need to make to run this in production? Because running it in test dev is different before you kind of scale it out and make it an all-in. So I expect a little bit of like thrashing around and then it will settle somewhere in between. Like we've seen, I feel like with every other technology, cloud was another example of that in my mind. And I think about the three sort of, spec the spectrum of maturity model yeah. that you, you laid out. I mean, I, the cynic in me say, data management has failed us. Uh, we built a $50 billion industry to do BI because it, you know, because we couldn't get the data out of the database, so right, we created this right, other right. layer. And so my question is, I forget what it was called. Gartner years ago had this thing like, I'm just gonna make it up, like old IT, new IT. Put a brick around old IT and then go after the new IT and it's all cloud and it's all wonderful. Right. How do you see this playing out. You mentioned like in some of the big LLM vendors that, that doing training, they have a clear in indication right. of what they want. I almost feel like actually the, the, the CIO me wants to say, which they would, this, this would never happen, but I, I throw it all away and see, start over. I can't wait to see where you're throw going. Throw it all away and start <laughs> over because this doesn't work. So either put a brick wall around it and let service the old sort of business that way, but we have to reinvent the way in which we do data management and really make it AI native. Up here, so it's way well. How do you think about that possibility? I mean, we never throw away stuff in IT. I, I get that. <laughs> legacy but it's, it exists it's, there for a reason. But yeah. I feel like that legacy is so broken, even though it, it's sort of worked, and it's definitely advanced us, but it's never given us the promise of 360 customer view and simplicity. Yeah. And, and now yeah. AI is making that very promise. Much agree with and, you. It, and it seems to like, wow, this actually may happen with data for the first time in our lives, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you, do you see organizations having that conversation, like start with a clean sheet of paper? Or are they saying, no, we have to leverage those existing assets and figure out how to not make them an albatross? I the, the interesting found that I found, Dave, is that a lot of customers weren't thinking about data. You know, we, we talk about data management like everyone's been doing it for a long time. And I, I don't know that they have. Uh. I think people have been storing data for a long time and they have been doing what they felt was necessary, but data management takes a lens beyond infrastructure into data, like what is it and where are you using it and why does it matter? And I, I don't know that everyone's been doing that. I've run across customers who haven't. So I think there is a section of the market, I have a hard time quantifying that, but there's a section of the market of who are just getting into data management. So they are starting with a clean sheet of paper. It's probably pretty Pride. big, actually. It probably yeah. is a pretty big segment now that you right. mentioned well, Especially as we're yeah. taking data out of silos to combine it into yeah. larger systems yeah. And, yeah. and leverage supercomputing to 
architect the solutions of the future. Right, right. It, it's it's a we have way more data than ever before. B and it's only going to continue to in increase yeah. in velocity. But yeah, I think I think that's actually a good point. Is there there is the opportunity to say, whoa, we didn't actually have a huge strategy for this yeah. at yep. a high level. Yep. We've just been gathering it and hopefully keeping it secure. Right. In right. the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like. I mean, I love Amazon, but Amazon would say, well, AI is all about the data and, and, the, and, and the data in the cloud is really good data, but it's, it's, it's a mess. Like I was saying, you got yeah, technical yeah. metadata, operational data, business metadata, it's just all over the place. You yeah. got 15 different data stores. And, and so to, to your point, you know, they're doing stuff with it at a very primitive level, yep, yep. you know, but it's not, solved to, to the point where you can say, okay, AI, here you go. Yeah, exactly. We're ready to, exactly. Ready to play. And that's really where people should start. I, I wouldn't start buying GPUs. I'd start with what data do we have? How is it adding business value? What, what could, how can we drive differentiation yeah. in our business? Yeah. Is our data actually ready? Is it governed? Is it secure? Exactly. Start there, spend, exactly. it, spend a year figuring that out. And then, fig then by then GPUs will be, you know, bigger, faster, better. <laughs> you know? And that's, that's exactly, I mean, you know what I was sort of saying, like there's sort of this questionnaire almost, right? a rudimentary question. That's what it's starting with. It's saying like, what, what are you doing today? What are you trying to achieve? Where are you? Where does your data live today? And, and a lot of times it's just all data is not equal. And I think that's sort of what in my mind is, we've gone through this pendulum of I've got to store data. Now I've got to make it super cost efficient because I'm going to drive down my cost and my IT budget is constrained. Now it's about data value, but have I made the investments to know what data is valuable? Because all of it is probably not. And there's some investment or I don't know, cleanup required in that space. So I think it's just, it's going through that journey. And ultimately in my mind, like there's been this data set concept that's been resonating with me, which is not all your data. It's a set of data that's actually your pertinent information. That's what you want to feed the GPU. And that's your high value data because that's what you're actually getting the most best results out of. So I think we're in that journey, but I agree with you. I think there's a lot of tools out there. I think there's many people starting from scratch because they've not thought about this in the same way before. But I also think it's going to be a great opportunity within the market to really refine all the tools that are out there and say, okay, let's stack them up and say against this criteria, which ones really meet it? And so I think you will see a shift in the market around the most appropriate data management tools bubbling up and probably starting to become more mainstream and some of the others potentially just, you know, moving out. But I think it's a great opportunity for us to leverage this and really refine what does data, I mean, data metric, you ask three people, you get three different definitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right? it's totally. You just brought up such a good point I want to sit on for a second. You know, I, and I think this is kind of distilling a little bit or settling down, but, you know, the quest for GPUs, everyone's excited about compute. The reality is not everyone needs to use every data point they have and, and, and train everything on these huge models. There's actually a lot of benefit to your point of curating and looking at what's the, the cleanest data we have, the best right. data we have, yeah. and what can actually inform decision-making or research or innovation versus just saying, well, we've got all this stuff. We might as well just throw it in there, like making a smoothie and put it all in the blender. It's not necessarily going to taste good or right. achieve results if right. it's the entire refrigerator. Right. That was right. the Duke mistake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, again. Totally. So I, I think I think that's one of the things that's so cool about what Dell's doing, and I've been where Dave and I in particular very closely following the AI factory is saying, okay, what are the components you need? Yeah. What's going to actually yeah. work, and what's actually going to tell you valuable information yeah. versus just be more spit something out, which which I think is it's an interesting tension here where. To your point, it's like, do you just put a brick box around it, or do you do you do you kind of go in there and and selectively, you know, pluck out exactly what you need to make the magic happen? Yeah, yeah. I think you got to cherry pick. I do. Yeah, I, I agree. I, do. I don't think you can. It's too much. Take the old and say, okay, now become. And especially you know, with old and new data coming in, there's no way to do that. I mean, there are there are certainly are ways to inject intelligence into that data, that awful data pipeline right. to make it simpler. And, yeah. and you know, the data engineers say, oh, like, they complain and they're right. They spend 80, 90% of their time wrangling data. AI can help with that. Yeah. You know, but but I think there's, there's a, you know, what's interesting to me, Gita, is that you're having these conversations with customers. Dell five years ago wasn't having these conversations. You're now a strategic partner in, in many ways because yeah. you got, you got this massive portfolio, you got this huge distribution channel. That's right. And 
you, you know, you've gone from kind of selling boxes to having these strategic Absolutely. discussions. You're still making money selling boxes. I get it. But, Absolutely. But Absolutely. you're having really interesting discussions across the ecosystem and with customers. Yeah. And I think they're starting to get through the whole organization. So, you, you know, you mentioned the data scientists before we talked to the infrastructure folks. Right? Yeah. And now it's the data scientists or it's the DevOps engineers. And they've got very different ask their perspective of life their value all of all of what they do is a, a completely different level of a conversation and the expectations on even the infrastructure because everything's kind of a block diagram right it builds on what's underneath it i think it does really look to us all to challenge ourselves on are we building the right stuff are we serving the right persona within these environments to make ai real within their environments because it's no longer just the infrastructure people it's a series of people that need to come together within an organization to make it real so yeah it's, it's very exciting uh, we're all about making it real here on the cube it's one of our favorite conversations <laughs> sad we were wondering if 2024 was going to be that year a little bit i think we're going to see a lot more in 2025 a lot in the inference world i have one final question for you if there's someone watching today looking at you a brilliant woman here on this stage who's thinking about getting into our arena or maybe some of the students, like we were right. talking about the researchers, or yep. you're a mathematician by trade, yep. which is really spectacular. What would be your advice to that eager mind, or maybe that minority mind who's thinking, oh gosh, this sounds so cool, but I'm just a little nervous and I don't know where to get started? I think just jump in. I feel like curiosity is the best skill that anybody can have. Like, be curious, ask the questions, don't be shy. Um, I, I think the tech industry, I feel like it's evolving so much and there's so much that I, I'm a big believer in young women in STEM. I support multiple groups. I mentor. Um, Dell has an, a set of offerings where, you know, we yeah. have these forums where we can help young women. Um, Girls Who Game is one that I'm very passionate about. So I think there's so many opportunities. Take advantage of them because if you don't get yourself out there, you won't know. And we're, we're learning together. So it's not like anybody's behind. But I think the curiosity, ask the questions, get out there. I think we've got so many curious minds. Brilliant people out there in the world let's get everyone to use oh beautifully stated. a lot of brilliant people here I'll tell yeah. you. a lot of brilliant people exactly. you know it, it, just because we're all crunching numbers and thinking about complex things doesn't mean we're not a welcoming group of individuals i mean we hugged after our last panel yes, we did. It, it, sure it did. i think i think that matters you know i think i think that's kind of the behind the scenes you don't always see here is is you don't have to be perfect in fact the hyperscalers don't have it perfected yet either we're all learning together right. Gita, thank you so much for spending so much of your day with us today. I feel like you're spoiling us with your attention, and we're very grateful for that. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Dave, always a fantastic right, discourse. Know. And thank all of you for tuning in, wherever you might be. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia, midway through day two of Supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.